everyone. Thanks so much for joining uh, joining the webinar this morning. I realise it's a little bit early over there, around 8 a.m. or quarter past eight. So hopefully I can keep you guys awake. And I'm just here to provide a bit of an overview of, uh, as Charlie said, uh, Banff and Lake Louise and skiing in the Canadian Rockies. So as you can see on the front title there, there's three different resort logos, Mount Norquay, Lake Louise, and also Sunshine Village. Now I actually represent all three of the ski resorts and the way it works is they are all individually owned. However, they've created a company called Ski Banff Lake Louise Sunshine and we essentially promote all three ski resorts as one destination. So when you come over to Banff Lake Louise, ski in the Canadian Rockies, we want to give you the opportunity to ski all three ski resorts and not just one or two. So I'll touch on that a little bit further, but firstly I'll just go into obviously a little bit of access into the area. Now this map I just guess uh, shows you some access uh, flying from Sydney, but of course there are other areas and other airports uh, that you can fly from. And of course Brisbane now has a direct flight from, um, for, I should say from Brisbane into Vancouver and we're pretty excited about that because that makes everything a little bit more accessible for us as well. Now the main international airport for getting to Banff Lake Louise is in fact Calgary. So generally the most, uh, the, the most used access points is either through Los Angeles, San Francisco or Vancouver. Now we do find a lot of the Vancouver flights are actually common rated from Vancouver into Calgary, so there's no extra cost for the flight. Uh, getting from Vancouver into Calgary. And then also what we find, a lot of the Australians uh, like to maybe add on a trip through San Francisco or Los Angeles and maybe tie in something like Las Vegas or a Disneyland or the like. So it is quite accessible flying into Calgary. And as you would know, it's roughly about a 17 hour flight from Sydney, Brisbane and also Melbourne uh, through to Calgary. Now once you do land in Calgary, we're actually a roughly about a 90 minute drive west of Calgary into the Banff National Park. It is a very easy drive, it's a very beautiful drive as well. It's a four lane divided highway and it's, there are no mountain passes to, to tackle. So for Australians coming over, if they do want to drive themselves, it is a very accessible drive. As I said, the only, uh, there's no mountain passes, four lane divided highway. The only difference will be that obviously driving on the other side of the road. However, for people not looking to drive, it's still very accessible. We do have a range of transfer options from the airport into Banff and Lake Louise. Very easy, very accessible, an hour and a half takes you straight from the airport into the town of Banff. And then once you're in the town of Banff, uh, there's a huge range of uh, options for people when they're in the town. Now the one thing to keep in mind about our destination is we are a national park. We're actually Canada's first and oldest national park and we're also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So we're quite a unique destination in that sense. We're very different to a lot of the other ski resorts in Canada like Whistler, Big White, Sun Peaks, uh, Panorama. We're quite different to those in the fact that we're not a purpose-built ski resort. We're actually a town first. So what that means is we have people living here, uh, you know, making their lives in this town. We have churches, we have schools, we have shops. So it's a really unique experience and it's a very different experience. We like to think of it as an authentic mountain town experience. And when you're in town, there's a huge range of options for people. So as you can see, 130 odd night spots, local pubs, uh, nightclubs, restaurants, uh, some fantastic shopping, something for everyone, and a huge range of hotels and restaurants and also award-winning spas as well. So we're a really good family destination and we're a really popular destination for all walks of life, no matter what interest you, you're into. And this is just a shot of downtown Banff at the town. As you can see, really surrounded by mountains. This is one view, but if you looked at any other view, it would be the same, uh, same scenario. We actually have a law in town going along with the National Park. You cannot build higher than three storeys in town. So what that means is we keep that real authentic feeling and we keep that view. So this view that you see will never be disrupted by like a 15 storey hotel. So we keep it pristine and we keep it the way Mother Nature intended. Very accessible town, so a lot of uh, shops in very close proximity. So no matter where you are staying in town, 
you can easily walk around and explore all the different night spots as well. So even though I did mention you can drive from the airport, we're consistently ranked in the top 10 no car needed ski resort. So you don't actually need a car. We make it very easy for you to walk around. And here's a great shot of uh, obviously lit up at Christmas, a very popular time for Australians to come over with the school holidays and really a beautiful uh, location all lit up for Christmas. And a huge range of accommodation options as well. Everything from hostels through to, of course, our famous five-star Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. Very iconic property, uh, the oldest property in, in the National Park and a really unique uh, Scottish style castle. So five-star castle, fantastic option. And then of course we have a range of mid-level options as well. So this is just an example, the Banff Caribou Lodge and Spa. It's a really nice three, three and a half star property located on, on the Banff Avenue. Uh, the Banff Aspen Lodge, a really nice hotel located close to town. Uh, fantastic breakfast there included, and then some really nice outdoor hot tubs as well, which of course people like to relax in at the end of the day. One of the newest properties is the Fox Hotel and Suites, which is a range between hotel and also kitchenette type properties, so a great option for people there as well. And then we just touch on a few must-do activities in BAMP, so a couple really great options. Uh, the, the one that I really try and um, you know, really push is just immerse yourself in the outdoors. We are a national park, there's so much to do in the outdoors. We've got a new bowling alley in town, which is a great option. And of course, we've got the Upper Hot Springs, which is actually the reason that Banff became a tourist uh, attraction in the first place. So, and you can actually go up there and rent the old school trunks that you know, they used to have in the, in the mid-1900s. And we've got some really famous Canadian foods such as beaver tails, which is a pastry with a, a range of different toppings. And nightlife, a range of different options uh, for, for dining. As I said, all in close proximity. A fantastic Greek restaurant, the Balkan, has belly dancing and plate smashing at night. We've got the famous Rosen Crown, which is an Irish type bar with uh, amazing uh, live music every night and, and billiards and some really local hospitality. And then Wild Bills, again, we have live entertainment there and some real famous Canadian options such as bull riding and karaoke and also some uh, calf roping options there as well. So a fun time for people looking for a little bit of difference. Park Distillery, the newest uh, restaurant in Banff. It's actually uh, the first legal distillery in the National Park. So it has some real, uh, some tasty spirits there, rye, vodka and gin that they distill in that uh, location as well. Now 40 minutes roughly up the road is the village of Lake Louise. Now this is another place for people to stay. It's very different to Banff in the fact that it's quite a bit more pristine, a little bit serene. So only about half a dozen accommodation options up here. So a little bit more laid back than the town of Banff. Not as much apres, but if you're really looking for that fantastic getaway, this is a fantastic option. And again, this is a great shot here of the famous Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise, which is on the banks of the uh, Lake Louise there with the Victoria Glacier in the background. So a very iconic hotel, five star. We're very lucky to have this in our destination. A very photoshopped, uh, a photographed area indeed. So, and this is looking back on the other side. So you can see the Lake Louise Ski Resort in the background and then some people out enjoying the outdoors. So here we are at the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise. Again, a range of dining options there, everything from the Glacier Saloon, which is a traditional cowboy saloon, the high-end um, like fondue restaurants there and some great steakhouses in there as well. Ice skating out on, on Lake Louise, sleigh rides around the lake, and also just afternoon tea in the Lakeview Lounge taking in the views. And another option is Lake Louise Inn, located very close to the ski resort of Lake Louise. Has some great condo options, so if families are looking to all stay together and have a, a bit more of a kitchen experience, this is a really nice option for the families as well. And Deer Lodge, a very rustic property in the town of Lake Louise with this fantastic rooftop uh, hot pool overlooking the mountains and a really nice option for those people looking for nice basic accommodation but central to everything. Some really unique dining experiences in Lake Louise as well. This is the Station Restaurant. It's an old actual train station that they've uh, turned into a restaurant and you can actually dine in one of the old uh, train cars as well. So a really unique experience for people dining out in Lake Louise. 
Now, of course, I'm here to talk about the skiing as well. So, as I mentioned, we have three very unique world-class ski resorts, Mount Norquay, Lake Louise Ski Resort, and Sunshine Village. So, in the right side, uh, if you can see the mouse here in Banff, this is the town of Banff. And then from the town of Banff, with, as I said, 40-minute drive to Lake Louise, you have access to these three ski resorts. So, roughly 10 minutes drive to Mount Norquay, roughly 15, 20 minutes drive to Sunshine Village, and roughly 35 minutes drive to Lake Louise. And again, you'll notice that this road is on the valley floor. So a really beautiful drive, but also a safe drive as well. You're not going over any mountain passes, so it is a very easy drive. Now, as I mentioned, our one lift ticket includes access to all three of these ski resorts. So when you come out and stay in the town of Banff or stay in the town, town of Lake Louise, you have access to all three resorts on one lift ticket. And the beautiful thing about our lift ticket as well is it actually includes your transfers to each of the three ski resorts. So every day you have an option to ski of any of the one three ski resorts. And this is where we differ a little bit again to some of the major ski, the other ski resorts in Canada. Being in a national park in a UNESCO World Heritage Site, we don't have a huge range of ski in, ski out accommodation. You do have to travel to the resorts, but as I said, we make it very easy by including the, tra the transfers in the lift ticket. And once I run through the resorts a little bit, you'll see why we don't overdevelop them. We like to keep them the way Mother Nature intended them and keep them pristine and really just let the views and the skiing do the talking. So the first one I'll touch on is Lake Louise Ski Resort. Really well known for its scenery. So it's consistently ranked in the top three, if not the most scenic ski resort in North America. So the views are definitely breathtaking up there. We've got a great range of terrain. Uh, there's a green, blue, black run from every chair, and it's a large ski resort as well. It's 4,200 acres, so a huge range of terrain and a huge range of skiing for everyone as well. So it's one of Canada's largest individually, uh, individual resorts in terms of size. And then I'm just going to run through a couple of scenic shots. Hopefully the slides keep up. But again, a very famous shot overlooking the, the famous Lake Louise and the Victoria Glacier. One of the most photographed shots you'll see in the National Park. This is again just another shot looking out over the mountains. So, you know, we've got a huge range of terrain. As I mentioned, we've got everything from wide open bowls to tree skiing to really nice wide open groomers as well. And really surrounded by these mountains. And what you will notice on a lot of these shots is you don't see a lot of development. So there's not a lot of condominiums, or there's no condominiums built. There's no highways running through our resorts. It's basically the way Mother Nature intended. So even though you do have to take a, a very scenic bus ride for 40 minutes, once you get up the top of these resorts and have a look around and just notice that, you know, they're the way Mother Nature intended, basically people go, okay, I get it. I get why you don't overdevelop these resorts, and we love the fact that you don't. It's not going to change. It's going to look the same in 50 to 100 years. So, And even though we don't overdevelop, we still have everything you need from a world-class ski resort. So this is a look down at the base area. So some fantastic dining options. We've got everything from we've got a brand-new sushi restaurant, Kumiyama. We've got really nice uh, fine dining on Mid-Mountain. Then, of course, we've got our um, cafeterias if you're looking for more low-key uh, wings and burgers and chips and what have you. So a really great option for the families with lots of uh, different dining variety as well. Now the next resort I'll talk about is Sunshine Village. As I mentioned, this is about 15, 20 minutes drive from the town of Banff, and it's actually Canada's highest elevated ski resort. And it's also very well known for its snow and the fact that we don't make any snow in Sunshine Village. It is all natural. And for skiers, that's very important. You know, the natural snow definitely trumps that man-made snow, and of course we have plenty of it. We actually have the longest non-glaciated ski season in North America. At Sunshine Village, it runs from mid-November through to mid to the end of May. Similar scenario with, uh, with this ski resort. So a huge range of terrain, again, everything from your tree skiing to your wide open bowls to your, to, to your wide open groomers, and of course your terrain parks as well. Once again, surrounded by these majestic peaks and these real sawtooth uh, mountains. And no matter where you are in, the, in, in this resort, you really feel, I guess, dwarfed by this mountain. So it's quite a unique experience. And as I said, really well known for its snow, so we get that really nice, light, dry, 
fluffy Canadian rocky snow, which I'll touch on in a little bit further. There's a shot of nice wide open groomers looking over uh, a nice peak there. It's, it's basically Canadian's version of the Matterhorn. It's Mount Assiniboine, one of the largest peaks in Canada. Here's a shot looking down over the day village of uh, Sunshine Village. As you can see, quite unique. Nothing really surrounding the area, no highways. It's not built up. It's quite uh, out. It's almost like a backcountry skiing experience. Train parks, very well known for the train parks, and we get some uh, some some of the top pros coming out here riding our train parks as well. It is also home to the only ski and ski out accommodation in Banff National Park, the Sunshine Mountain Lodge, located up on the mountain. So it's quite unique. As you can see, very close to the, to the chairs. It's quite unique because it's the only one and it will ever be the only one. So when that mountain closes, basically the guests are up there quite remote and it really is a fantastic experience up there. It's an 84-room boutique hotel, and there's a range of dining options up there as well. So even though you are quite remote, if you start there for a couple of nights, you can definitely experience some uh, nice dining up there and a range of dining as well. We're also home to Canada's only and first heated chair. This is a shot of the brand new TP chair. It's a four-seat detachable quad with a bubble canopy and also heated seats. So it's pretty much the Rolls-Royce. Of, uh, of chair lifts and, and on, a, on a cooler day it's definitely a great chair to do laps on. Some great apres skiing up there as well so when you get those sunny days it's a fantastic spot to just enjoy a little bit of downtime. Then the last one of course is Mount Norquay. It's the smallest one of the three ski resorts, 190 acres. We like to say it's the best kept secret in the Rockies. It's very close to town, as I said only 10 minutes from town. Uh, it has uh, the only night skiing in the Banff National Park, and it also has tubing and sightseeing included in your lift ticket. Really uh, popular local spot where the kids love to come and ski, and it's a great option for even a half day skiing if you just wanted, or even in the afternoon when you arrive, you can get it, go up and get a couple laps in and really get, get the uh, cobwebs out of you after a long flight. As you can see, it pretty much looks as though you're skiing almost into the town of Banff. So very close to Banff, very accessible, only a 10 minute drive. Once again, fantastic views, some really amazing scenery just surrounded by these mountains. And of course, the same consistent snow that we're, that we're blessed with here in the Canadian Rockies. And as I mentioned, tubing is included and that's a really fun experience. Great for families and adults alike, even in the afternoon after you've done a bit of skiing, it's a great way to finish the day. Some really fantastic scenery up there as well, as you can see. So all up, with the three ski resorts combined, you've got roughly 8,000 acres of skiing terrain. So terrain for all levels and all abilities and all tastes. And as I mentioned, it includes transfers to your choice of resort. So it's almost like a multi-resort destination, but you're staying in the one location. We do have complimentary mountain guides at each of our resorts. Basically, they're locals who love to get out and ski, and they're very knowledgeable and they're very experienced at the resort, so they can show you where the best runs are, where the best views are, and they're really knowledgeable about the area as well. We also operate a program called Club Ski. It's a three-day program, guided slash lesson program, where you do one day at each resort and you get the same pro each day. So for people coming over, 8,000 acres, it's quite a large amount of terrain. So you can get a lesson and also a guided experience at the one time. And we do these for adults and children alike in skiing. And apart from the club ski, of course, we offer a range of lessons for all ages and abilities. The resorts love to take new skiers or, or even you know, uh, ex expert skiers out and really work on their skill level and get them skiing to the best of their ability. Everything from private lessons through to group lessons. We also have a store downtown, the Banff Ski Hub, where you can collect rentals from. Uh, it's also retail, and it's a great information spot for people who may have some questions or looking for some last minute information. So as I mentioned, average of 30 feet of dry champagne powder. Of course, with our location inland and also northern location, we get that really nice, light, beautiful, dry champagne, pa champagne powder, different to the coastal resorts. It's really light, it's really dry, and it's what everyone really wants to ski on. And we have a very body-friendly and also snow-friendly elevation. The town of Banff is roughly 4,500 feet, and then the summit of Sunshine, which is the highest peak, is just under 9,000 feet. 
So what that means for Australians coming over from sea level, it's very body friendly. It's not going to take them for a couple of days to acclimatise. And uh, you know, if they only ski for a week a year, it's not going to take them too long to get their ski legs in. And when we say snow friendly, it means we're high elevated enough that we get that snow and we don't get the dreaded R word, which a lot of our friends uh, out west might get a little bit more than us. We're just very lucky that we have that really nice elevation. And of course, I put a picture of a beer there because I know that Australians like to drink. You probably tell that I am Australian. You can tell. So with that body-friendly elevation, you can have a few beers, and it can and it won't affect you too much, which I know is very important on a ski holiday. So of course, being in a national park, we have a range of non-ski activities. We realise that we get a lot of non-skiers come over, and also people coming over for a week might not want to ski every day. But being in a national park, you can really get out into the outdoors. Here's a fantastic shot of a couple snowshoeing out in the Sunshine Meadows. You can do self-guided or, of course, you can take guided tours as well. Ice skating on the famous Chateau Lake Louise with the ice castle that they build every year is a fantastic option as well. Uh, Cross-country skiing, again, really about immersing yourself out in the outdoors. Dog sledding, very famous option as well. You can either sit in the basket yourself with a guide um, leading the team or you can lead a team yourself as well. Ice climbing, really great option looking up uh, here at Johnson Canyon for a little bit more adventurous. Or if you just want to take in the sights, there's plenty of time to take in the views and sit on, just take, take it easy. And of course the Banff Upper Hot Springs as I mentioned before, really famous and iconic uh, experience here in the town of Banff. And of course, being in a national park, you've got to meet the locals, which is the wildlife that we share the national park with. Now, these guys are pretty much everywhere around the national park. So here's a shot of a nice elk, which you'll pretty much be guaranteed to see, whether it's on the way to the ski resort or even just walking around downtown, uh, you see these guys. So here's some bighorn sheep that you'll, you'll definitely see. And we've been seeing a few wolves around recently as well. So they generally keep their distance, but obviously, you know, you've just got to treat them like the wild animals that they are. And of course, there's opportunity to see bears. Mid-season, generally not as, uh, not as prevalent, of course, because they are hibernating. But early season and also in the spring, these guys definitely come out. And these are the ones that you definitely want to keep your distance from. But they're great to see from a distance. And another point that I'll touch on real quick is the exchange rate. Obviously, for Australians coming over to Canada right now, it's a fantastic value option. Uh, it's the, compared to the Japanese yen and the US dollar, Canada is a really economical option. And what a lot of people don't know about Banff and Lake Louise is winter is our low season. So what that means is come winter, our, cry, our crowds uh, die down, but more importantly, our rates go down as well. So summer being peak season means you're paying peak prices. Winter being low season means you're paying low season prices. So we're a very economical option for a ski holiday. And in saying that, our early booking specials, we are quite aggressive with some of our early booking specials. So I guess the point here is the earlier you book, the better deal you're going to get. So we have a few deadlines. So August 31, you can save up to 50% off lift tickets. October 31, 45%, November 30, 40% off lift tickets. And during this time, you can also save up to 30% off accommodation. We also have other value adds, such as Kids Ski Free. Uh, this season, we're also adding a free Banff Upper Hot Springs Pass with every three plus day lift ticket. And we also have some value add deals throughout Banff and the resorts. So if you have a tri-area ticket, you can get some really good deals at the local bars and restaurants here in town. So we want to make it as economical uh, uh, and, and budget friendly for everyone as possible. So, and if you've got more information on this, I'm happy to, uh, sorry, if you need more information, I'm happy to answer any questions, but of course you can contact your preferred wholesaler for more details as well. They have all their rates and all their specials now and we're definitely selling. So just a quick recap, why Banff Lake Louise? Three of the world's finest ski resorts, two town sites, all located in Banff National Park, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. 8,000 acres of combined skiable terrain, all on one tri-area lift ticket. Winter in Banff is low season, so great value for money, and of course the crowds are lower. You don't spend time lining up, you spend more time skiing. Average snowfall, 30 feet or nine meters of our famous light, dry Canadian Rocky snow. Easy access from Calgary International Airport, only 90 minutes west from the airport into the National Park. Over 130 bars and restaurants for apres ski, so a real authentic Canadian mountain town. 
and of course body friendly and snow friendly elevation. As I mentioned, the town of Banff is 4,500 feet and the summit of the resort is only 9,000 feet. So there's just a couple of reasons. And I thought I'd just uh, throw this one out there as well. Everyone loves prizes and I wanted to thank you guys for taking your time to, to, to listen today. So I've got three very easy questions. Uh, if you want to just jot these down, uh, name three hotels located in the Banff National Park. What are the driving distances between Banff and each of the three ski resorts? And name three unique reasons for Aussies to ski at Banff Lake Louise. And I'll give you a minute just to jot those down. And I haven't said what the prize is, but it'll be a nice uh, Banff, Ski Banff Lake Louise swag pack that I'll send out to the winner. And these are my contact details here. So Steve Pample, uh, the best way to contact is email just steve at skibig3.com. And if you wanted to answer any of those questions and send through, uh, I'd love to, to get a prize out to you guys. But also not just that, if you've ever got any questions at all, I'm happy to help. If you've ever got any inquiries about guests or, or any uh, you know, specific requirements, I'm more than happy to, to, to help you. And that's pretty much it that I've got um, for you guys today. I'll put those questions back up in case you didn't get a chance, but I'll hand it back to Charlie. But uh, just quickly, thank you guys again for uh, sitting in and listening. I do hope that was useful and I do hope that was informative. But again, my contact uh, email is steve at skibig3.com. More than happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Steve, thank you so much. Pleasure. Such a fantastic uh, presentation, fantastic destination. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been there, so uh, bringing back good memories and scribbling down lots of notes and things. So uh, thank you. And yeah, Pleasure. just touching on the things that you said. So the low season in the winter is is so fantastic. You can get such there's such great deals out there in the market right now. So uh, if anybody does have clients thinking about skiing, then uh, yeah, Banff Lake Louise is definitely. Uh, great place to visit, so um, hopefully you've got a bit of info now to uh, help them make that decision. Um, so guys, the floor is open for questions. If anyone have any questions, just type them into the chat box and I will ask Steve. Um, the other thing I jotted down was that um, for me as well, the mountains are all so different, Steve. So you've got these three mountains, but they offer such different experience as well. So you really feel like you visited three different places when you skied at each of them. That's correct, and it's quite interesting because one of the biggest battles you'll probably have if a group come over is which is your favourite mountain. It's always a, a very unique talking point. Yeah, def yeah, definitely. Um, and also, I guess it's great to have the option because the weather might be a bit different in Banff than in Lake Louise one day, or the snow might be a bit different. So it's really great to have, um, you know, on, on any day you can visit any resort with the with the lift path as well. So that's right. That's you don't right. have to plan ahead. You can pretty much wake up and check the shuttle schedule and, and jump on one that he, that's heading to the resort that you want to go to. And all those beautiful pictures as well. It really, oh, well, it looks better than that in real life, but the pictures uh, are, are really lovely. So um, that was great. So, any questions? I don't think anybody's got anything coming through, and hopefully, or well, you're probably too busy uh, scribbling down Steve's questions. So, um, that's awesome there. Thanks, Steve. Get a good uh, bag of swag from, uh, yeah. from Banff and Lake Louise. Uh, Michelle says, I visited all three mountains and loved them all. Feel particularly spoilt now that I've tried the heated lift by <laughs> every mountain. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nice. nice. Nice to stay warm on this, on the left, hey Michelle. Well, there you go. Another reason to uh, to visit Banff Lake Louise. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All righty. Well, we'll sign off there then. Um, hopefully, you've all got Steve's email, and I'll do the follow up, and Steve will do some follow up as well. So uh, you'll have plenty of opportunities to ask questions, or obviously uh, do get in touch with your preferred ski wholesaler as well. Well, those guys are uh, experts in all this stuff. So um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Steve, for presenting today. I think it was your first CSP webinar, so it's great to have you on. And everybody else, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate the time.